If you've got cracked walls or tile, uneven floors or sticky doors and windows, the first thing that comes to mind is pretty scary, foundation repair. Today we're joined by an Arizona author they call the Dirt Whisperer as we dive into the four myths of foundation repair on State 48 Homeowner. Hi, I'm Kenny Klaus, and this is State 48 Homeowner. Hey, my friends, welcome back to the State 48 Homeowner podcast. And today we've got RK Bob Brown, who is the one and only world famous Dirt Whisperer. How you doing, Bob? Hey, great. Thanks for having me. So the Dirt Whisperer, who gave you the title of the Dirt Whisperer? One of my employees came up with that name at one point, and it just sort of stuck. <laughs> so you founded Arizona Foundation uh, Solutions back in 1989. Correct. In Phoenix. And uh, how, how many years did you run that? 35 years? Yeah, about 35 years. Yeah. And so what did, what did you guys do? Well, and originally I started out as a concrete repair company. Uh, but, but over time, uh, I developed uh, into a foundation repair company. Uh, and basically we did remediation and, uh, I kept adding services and, 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 and modalities to the, to the business. Uh, I eventually added an engineering team, uh, a full, a full team of uh, engineers and, and, uh, assistance to the engineers to do the uh, diagnosis. You went to ASU. Correct. Got a degree in finance and another degree in architecture. So you focused above the ground and then started going below the ground. That's right. When you're, when you're talking about foundations, it's all about the dirt. <laughs> and uh, so today we want to talk about uh, four different myths that people have about where the dirt meets the foundation and how all that interacts. Right. And so the first myth that people have is that dirt is dirt. Right. Yeah. A lot of people, you know, you look at the dirt, it all looks kind of brown, right? You dig down, it still looks kind of brown. Uh, but in fact, it, it's really complicated. Uh, dirt gets deposited in layers. Some of them are thick, some of them are thin, different mineral contents, different densities, different affinities for water, you know, clays, silts, sands, gravels, all different contents, uh, mineral contents of those things. There's, you know, there's probably 20 different kinds of clay. Uh, it can be very complicated. And water moves through those layers and does different things to those soils while the water moves through. Uh, might go through well, and I, I would venture to say, uh, you know, your background looks a little bit different. You're up in Prescott. Well, uh, now we're, <laughs> yeah. And we're in Mesa and our soil is going to be vastly different than your soil up there in Prescott. Would I be that's, incorrect? That's right. there? Yeah. So you look at Gilbert, Gilbert's really flat. Gilbert has a lot of really clay soils. Okay. Why is that? Well, it's, it's a nice flat plain. Clay soils get deposited. They get mixed up in the water. And if they flow down the river, they go all the way out to the sea. But if you have a flood that goes over a large area, a big flat plain, the, the water goes out there and settles down and the water evaporates and leaves the clays behind. And so areas like Gilbert have a lot of clay deposits, mm -hmm. probably from the Salt River flooding it at some point. And then uh, up there, you've got a lot, you got more uh, granite rock in there. You, there. But you would be surprised. There's a lot of clay soils up here. And and originally clays come from volcanic ash. So when the volcano spews its ash, you know, it comes out and lands and then it goes through some chemical processes to get to clay. And uh, so uh, and, 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 and you can get the clay in a flat area also and later have uplift. And that's kind of Prescott's kind of that way. There's some really expansive clays, mostly in the flatter areas. But also, if you go up to Fountain Hills, that's kind of a hilly area, right? Well, mm -hmm. there's some expensive clays in Fountain Hills. So either either they got raised up later or somehow it doesn't always apply. You know, in, in foundation world, there's there's nothing that's 100 percent. Nothing. There's always exceptions to every rule. So depending on where I'm at in the valley, uh, m the foundations can interact differently. Right. With the ground. Yeah. So like when you're in Houston, totally different. In Houston, you have a wet soil that's been wet for millions of years. You know what they do? They put a soaker around the house on a timer and turn it on once or twice a day to keep the soil wet. Well, that would be insanity here in, in anywhere in, in, in the lower Arizona area. 
Mm-hmm. You would never do that. That that would be you have to get your head examined if you did that, right? So yep. it, it really does depend on what, what the conditions are. Second myth. We've got a lot of people here in Arizona. Uh, it seems like, uh, you know, yeah, a lot of us have carpet, but a huge ton of us have tile. And right. we will start to see cracks in that tile. Does that mean, you know, I think a lot of people believe the myth that a crack in the tile means that we have issues with our foundation. Yeah, well, so first of all, the floor is not always the foundation. Uh, up until about 2003, the floor was a four inch slab that wasn't even connected to the foundation. It just butts up next to the stem wall and is it, it not a structural element. All, uh-huh. all, of the, all of the roof loads are trusses that bear to the perimeter walls and the slab basically just, uh, it's there to keep your feet from getting dirty. You know, not, you, nobody wants a dirt floor, right? Uh, yeah. and it, you, you know, <laughs> anyway. The, the point is that uh, th- that all changed in 2003 when they started putting in post-tension slabs. And now that's kind of poured monolithically with the foundation. The middle part of it, you could st- you could say it's a foundation, but it's not really holding anything up. All the weight yeah. is still bared uh, to the perimeter on the perimeter walls. And that's one of the reasons why it's so important to take care of that stem wall. And right. We, we go and we'll see houses all the time where they've let that uh, paint that's on the stem wall deteriorate. Right. We've seen water uh, did start to deteriorate that stem wall and people just don't seem to care and right. don't realize that that is their foundation. And people right. just believe that their foundation is the slab and, and they just let that stem wall deteriorate over time. Most of the damage from the stem wall occurs from moisture in the soil around it. So what you really want to do is make sure that the soil around your house drains properly. It drains away from the house, not towards the house. That's the thing. And don't don't overwater and don't you know don't let moisture accumulate. Don't don't have sprinklers and that kind of stuff that you know are always wetting the soil. Grass. If you have grass right up next to it, that's horrible because that grass is going to get overwatered to make make it green, and that soil is always going to be wet, and that's going to soak right into that stem wall. Yeah, and, and not only that, and when we have vegetation right up next to the house, it's not only that uh, moisture that's causing issues, but then we're also having issues with, with bugs and termites and stuff that's going to... Yeah, absolutely, uh, because the, the bugs and the, mo- the termites and all that like that wet soil, right? So they're going to follow mm-hmm. it, and they're going to follow it right into the house. The Klaus team is different. With the Klaus team, you have someone on your side. Where you live and make memories is important. We have more unique strategies than anyone else to help you accomplish what matters most to you. We can help you with traditional real estate as well as other options such as our lease purchase programs. We can help you buy first then sell and we can bring you instant offers. We're here to help our neighbors achieve the American dream and help them build wealth through home ownership. For more info or to start your home search, visit us online at klausteam.com. So, if I do have issues with my foundation, uh, <clears throat> anybody that I that puts a business card on my front door is they're a qualified design specialist. Yeah, is what I so understand. so this is a horrible myth that uh, happens, and and you know I owned a foundation repair company for a long time. Foundation repair companies are really good at marketing, and and now I'm kind of good at marketing because I did that for a long time. I know how it works. I mean. One of the one of the suppliers for our network that I was in had a hundred people in the internet marketing division alone just to kind of help us get to the top of, of the Google page. Right, mm-hmm. they're really good at marketing. So when you have problems and you Google it, guess what? You're going to find those guys because they're good at that. But it, that's the problem. They're not the right guys to call. What they're going to do? Ding ding! Hello, I got a foundation problem. Okay, we'll be right out. They send out a commissioned salesperson a guy who makes no money unless he makes sales. And these guys make somewhere between 100 and 300,000 a year, and if they don't make 100,000 a year, they kick them to the curb. Uh, it's very competitive business, mm-hmm. a lot of pressure, a lot of pressure to sell. And so they're going to tell you that they're, you know, that they're qualified design specialists and, you know, they've been doing this for a gazillion years and they're better than engineers and they puff up their chests and they're really great and all that stuff, but the, the, you know, the, the problem is they don't know what they don't know. Uh, 
and, and it seems like the less you know, the more confident you are and the more you puff up your chest to make yourself seem like you're really groovy. But uh, the fact of the matter is the guys that really know what was going on are forensic geotech engineers. They're not going to be flashy. They're going to they're not going to have good marketing. They're not going to have uh, you know, they're not going to be good salespeople. They're not going to come out and tell you that they're the greatest thing since sliced bread. They're not going to do any of those things, but they're going to be competent. And that's what you mm -hmm. need. And they have no axe to grind. You know what? They discover a problem. They can fix it with drainage. Super cheap. They're going to tell you that. They're not going to tell you that you need $60,000 worth of peers every time somebody comes out, which is probably what's going to happen with a foundation repair guy. Yeah. And we've, we've seen instances where they, they have told us that we, you know, we've, they have told clients that they need uh, $60,000 worth of peers when they didn't. Right. You know, and, the, and they've misdiagnosed things. That's right. They might, they might, you might have uh, upheaval heave uh, going on from expansive soils that don't require peers at all. But these guys, you know, that's the only tool they have. One of my favorite sayings is, if the only tool you have is a hammer, then all your problems start looking like nails. And that's exactly <laughs> what happens here. They, they see cracks in the walls and they put in peers. Well, <laughs> it's a little more to it than that. All right. The fourth myth we've heard a lot is that foundation, it's not moving. Right. Yeah. So, uh, you know, you'll have people come out and say, oh, yeah. Well, you got all this damage and your house is going to keep moving. It's going to get worse. You know, you could turn into a structural problem or 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 maybe, you know, somebody, maybe a structural engineer might come out and say, yeah, your house is done moving. But you know what? The structural engineer doesn't know that. Honestly, they're not even the right guys to call because they don't know anything about the soils and all the problems coming from the soils. If you ask a structural engineer, OK, is this crack going to get, get, you know, get get worse? Well, if it, you know, if the house keeps moving, it is. But then soon you say to the engineer, well, is the house going to keep moving? Well, I don't know. You have to ask a geotech for that. I'm a structural engineer, you know. Uh, forensic geotechnical engineers are the guys, the only ones who can opine and tell you, oh, yeah, you're going to expect more movement or no. And, and they know that the local geology, they know how the soils were deposited. They, know, they do borings. They know how things work. They could do a boring on your property if you needed to. Mm -hmm. uh, but they're the ones that understand this. They, they will be the ones to opine and say, yeah, I don't think you have much movement left or, yeah, you're going to have more movement. You know, they're the ones. That, anybody else that tells you that they're BSing you. Anybody else. Talk, talk to us about foundation repair secrets. So I wrote uh, foundation repair secrets as a book, mainly to just help people understand uh, how this industry works and what what you know, how to be educated, be aware of these things, right? Uh, when I sold my companies, I got plenty of money. I, I don't, I'm not doing this for the money. I'm doing it to educate people, to help them understand, to spread awareness so that uh, they can be aware of all these things. And you can, you can go to uh, Amazon and find Foundation Repair Secrets. You can, if you Google Foundation Repair Secrets, my website will come up, which is the same title. You can get to the book through there. Uh, and there's lots of education. If you get to my newsletter, you can, uh, we'll send you a free 15, uh, all 15 myths and, and a few other little goodies besides yep. that, uh, where you can understand it all. Because I understand, you know, I'm, I'm speaking fast and I'm speaking a lot of things and people don't understand everything I'm saying. And it's like drinking from a fire hose. I get it. Uh, but if you want to understand more, that's where you can go. Yeah, head over to foundationrepairsecrets.com. You can get uh, 10 things to ask your foundation inspector. You can get uh, the 15 myths, dive in deeper than we, we've had here. And you can get a link to, uh, to that uh, great book. Uh, Bob, thank you so much for spending your time here. And uh, we'd love to have you back and talk a little bit deeper about, you know, what happens when uh, something goes crazy underneath your yeah. foundation. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Thanks for spending time with us this week at State 48 Homeowner, the ins and outs of owning an Arizona home. You can connect with us for more information, submit topics you'd like us to further discuss. You can see relevant videos, give us feedback, answer your real estate questions and more at state48homeowner.com.